Before the pod, you already know. Here's our guest. Chilling. Damn. Hey, I'm not a dad, but I'm happy. <laughs> Dylan, are you a dad already? Oh, you're a dad? You're a dad? <laughs> what? He doesn't know it yet. He doesn't know it yet. <laughs> Damn, Dylan. We out here. Look at this. This setup. We already know, baby. It's also like podcast. We out here today. Ruth is in you. Oh, just to fucking smell it. Oh, just bring me flashbacks. Flashbacks to Nico when I got Ruthie. <laughs> oh, God, fuck it. <sighs> okay, it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. It was as bad as I thought it was going to be. No? No, no, no. You ready, Brian? Opening the happy dads. But we are back. It's also like podcast, man. You know, the most authentic, most organic podcast out here. And we are sitting with, let me tell you. One, he's now our friend. You know, and we feel cool because we have a cantante as our friend. He's a singer, songwriter, right? Um... Coming up in all social media, TikTok, Instagram, hire him for the next fucking party, Bautizo, Privada, Quinceañera, Sancha's birthday, Night Novia's clubs. birthday. <laughs> we got exposed. We got my friend, my homie, <laughs> Mr. Brian in the house, baby. Let's go. Appreciate you, bro. Um, just cool. I'm happy to be here, man. Thanks for inviting me. Nah, man. You know, it, it's it was a... It's one of those things that happen at the right moment, and I know it's the right time because what you're doing, your song just came out. Yeah. It's a banger. I appreciate What's it. What's the name of the song? So everybody knows it's this, right? It's called now. Ando La Movida Plebada. It's a song that I wrote, and, man, I've been getting a lot of good positive feedbacks, and, man, we, we ain't stopping, man. Is that the, the first... One that you come out with that, that you wrote yourself? Nah, on the contrary, uh, I've been composing since I was like 15, 14 years old, man. Like, so I have a lot of music coming up, so stay tuned. So let's get let's get right into it. What got you into music, bro? Man, I started at the age of five. Like, uh, I started singing at the age of five years old, man. Like, uh, it was just like... It all started with when my dad bought like a, a mariachi city, like a, it's called. Which one is it? My bad, I take the back. It was a, it was a song. It was a corrido actually by Chuy Mauricio. It's mm. called este Chuy, Oh yeah, it was Chuy Mauricio del Potro de Sinaloa. Yeah, yeah. And so, that's a banger. Usually, my parents and I we would go like we would go like uh, long, uh, long road uh, trips. So we would go to uh, Nevada or so, you know, We would go from LA to Mexico to visit the family. And I remember that he had a CD of, I don't know, if it was a Potro de Sinaloa or it was a Pedrito Fernandez de La Mochila Azul. So either one of them. They were, nice. he, would, he would play it all the time. Yeah. And so, like, since I was a little kid, I've, I've, been, I've been liking music since, since I was at like, age five. And si ya cuando terminó una canción, I would be like, otra vez, apa, otra vez. And my dad was like, ¿Por qué, ¿por qué te gusta tanto esa canción? No sé, apa, me gusta, me gusta. <laughs> and as soon as I arrived to Mexico or wherever we were planning to go, we were where where we were at, so I ended up learning the whole fucking song. So like, everywhere I would go, I would be singing that little song or humming the tune. And since then, my parents knew that or realized that that I had a little thing for the music. What did what did music do for you during that time that you found it though? So, the podcast, you know, shout out to everybody. We reached eight thousand on on YouTube, one seventy seven right. on TikTok. Um. You know, showing mad love. Appreciate everybody and everybody here. Um, our thing is finding out why why you do what you do and what got you into this. Man, 
honestly, the first time that I started singing on stage was like, it was like a a bribe situation. So basically my dad <laughs> took me to a, 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 like a local plaza around here, like yeah, in my yeah. town in Huntington Park. Uh, it's called Plaza La Alameda. And every weekend they will do like little karaoke nights and stuff. Facts. So it was like in La Tarde. And so my jefe, would, like at the time I would sing, but I would just sing to my, my, my family folks. So like it was just more like private. Facts. I don't like to sing it with people that I don't know. I yeah, get shy, yeah. you know. I mean at the age of five, who, who doesn't get oh, shy? Oh, yeah, like you... You don't want to do it, but when they tell you, hey, pero te doy dos dólares. Exactly. So, I'm on so it. my dad puts me on the list, and he's like, mijo, te puse en esta lista para que te pongas a cantar. I was like, no, pa, no, pa, I don't want to. I don't want I started crying, bro. I remember <laughs> everything. Like, no, pa, I don't want to, please. I, I don't know these people. And he's like, mijo, no tengas vergüenza. Es lo mismo que si vas a cantar con tu familia, mijo. And I was like, no, no quiero. And all of a sudden, he pulls out a ten dollar bill. He's like, "Te doy diez dólares si te pongas a cantar." No, no, no quiero, no quiero. He pulls out a twenty. Tampoco no quise. He pulls out a fifty dollars, and so fifty dollars to me at the age of five was like fucking like a million dollars. So I was like, "Quiero." Ah, pues, ah okay, está bien. <laughs> Dude, do you remember those those times like when you're fucking around with your cousins and you make them cry? Hey, no, no, no stop, stop. I'll give you a dollar for. I'll give you a dollar. <laughs> Okay, for five, five, <laughs> stop. <laughs> hey, since I was a little kid, I was a little businessman. You feel me? So, hey. <laughs> so, I think a lot of, I mean, I know, damn, remembering now, I tried out for the course and I mentioned I didn't make it. For real. I don't have a voice, Dick, but I thought I had a voice. Hey. I was like, I'm going to try it out. They were like, sing the happy birthday. So, me. <clears throat> Have, and then uh, <laughs> Thank you <laughs> I was like oh. That's how you start ha, Thank you, <laughs> you They were like What up bro No I finished uh, it But yeah. like The teacher I mean she didn't seem Better than me anyway But she was like I hate that <laughs> She was like Thank you for trying And I was like Thank you for trying I was like There goes my fucking Music <laughs> fucking <laughs> career <laughs> Right away at, it's because it your voice was in tune at that time, bro. Nah, I have sure, a deep voice. Sure right now I could have done like a bro, whole like country, bro. Country. How you, how country. you doing? Better lock, oh. better lock than door and turn the, the lights down low. <laughs> Fuck yeah, hell yeah. Hey, Genesis, know this? Shout out Genesis. Um. Shout out Pepe that came through. Dylan not even fucking paying attention like always. So comment, comment down if you guys see Dylan. Make sure you guys tell him something. You're, you're, bro, you're eating a sandwich. Come on, I know. <laughs> Dylan, He's on his lunch break. Dylan's just hitting up all the girls. Good morning, good morning, good hey, morning, good morning. What you doing? <laughs> hope you work. What you doing tonight? Hope you Wait. slept. Hope you slept good. Singer, singer or song, Dylan? Uh, what song uh, are you a singer? Oh, shit. Hey. Okay, okay. I forgave you. My Come bad, my Tennessee bad. Hey, that's my jam, bro. Bro, I appreciate that's you. That's my jam, bro. Hey, a million views, bro, in less than five months in YouTube, uh, man. Let's go, bro. Hey. A million? Yeah, man. On YouTube. Honestly, Spotify. that 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 is a jam, but you know, let, let's not take away that the beginning of of Brian and the singing because you mentioned earlier when you started off. When did it become serious that your parents had to start managing? Well, you? like I said, like um, <clears throat> so when that happened, when my dad gave me fifty bucks so I could sing right there, uh, bro, I was I was when I was up in the stage, bro, I was a total different person, man, like. Was there like a confidence boost that you just I, like magically I got? I guess, I guess, since I, since I was a little kid, me and my dad, we, we would always watch like old school movies, like the Mexican old school movies, like Pedro Infante, Flas, Pedro Infante, Infante uh, Lad. My dad still does. Hell yeah, bro. I still to this day. My man. dad still does. And then he falls asleep and then I'm just like, you still watching it? Dad, no, 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 no. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, dude, man, my guy, it, relax. It was a, they, they call it La Epoca de Oro in cine. So like. All those movies are fucking beautiful, man. Like it has, yeah. a, it has a deeper meaning, you know. It's different, and the bro. production, it's totally different, bro. It's two totally different worlds, like compared to some movies now. Nowadays. Yeah, facts. But uh, yeah, man. Like since I was a little kid, I would watch those movies and I would see Pedro Infante, Antonio Lara, like conquistando las muchachas when they're like singing a song or es cosa, you know. And I would always say, "Damn, I want to be like that, or I want to act like that." And so sometimes, whenever like they will do like the scenes, I will mimic them or try to act like a certain way. But what? But why was that? Is it because something of confidence that you were missing? Is it something? I, I that would say confidence that I was missing because at a young age I was very antisocial. I mean, I was no. I take that back. I was really friendly, but me costaba to talk to people. You know what I mean? Especially yeah. girls. You know, and hate getting rejected. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, you go talk to her for a season. Yeah, bro. Nah, and I, I, don't. I fuck that. I, I, <laughs> you do it. I can't, I can't take no's. Uh-huh. I think that's my thing. Like, too, from the man. beginning, I, I hate taking no's. Like, obviously, I don't make, like, a whole huge scene about it. But then later on, like, alone? Fuck. Yeah, yeah fuck like, up. inside, you're just like, shit. Damn, bro. Yeah. So, if you're thinking about Especially talking to Especially at a young kid, you know, like, at a young age. <sighs> you know? For all my 18 and older, if you're thinking about going talking to a girl, just go do it, big guy. <laughs> and if she, look, the worst thing that she could say is no and yes. You know what I mean? Like, either way. And if she says no, then you move on to her friend. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love that, bro. I, I, I'm, hey. ins- I, I'm inspired by a message I sent today. It's like, if she if she denied you, don't be mad when he when I'm messaging your best friend. I'm like, oh, Jeez. but hey, but it happens though. As soon as you start talking to their best friend or what, we're not having the other one comes back. The other one comes back. Yeah, it's because now now I'm most girls they like hacerse de rogar. You know what I mean? Like we're gonna we're, we're gonna get okay, into okay, that, okay, Brian. Okay, Brian, okay, my but, bad, my bad, my but, but this is about I'm skipping, you. I'm skipping, skipping topics. It's, my bad. Brian is. But like I said, like uh, when I was up on the stage, bro, I was a total different person. And I guess music helped me. You remember that song you sang? Yeah, the first one. Which one was it? It was two songs. It was Chu Mauricio and La Mochila Azul. Like, ¿Qué te pasa, chiquillo? ¿Qué te pasa? Me dicen en la escuela y me preguntan en mi casa. Que hasta ahora lo supe de repente Cuando Luis pasa la lista y ella no estuvo presente But like obviously with a, like a squeaky voice I'm in love, shit. I'm in love <laughs> ¿Qué te pasa, chiquillo? ¿Qué te pasa? Like that, like that type Damn, of song. But that, that's, that's so dope that you remember those two songs that You know, kind of like just give me that start up to the rest So slightly fast forward you said your parents became your managers. Yeah, man. Like, everywhere. Well, as soon as they started seeing that I was taking everything serious, they started putting me in music classes. Because I'm not going to say that I was the best at it, but I had a voice. And my, my parents supported me as long as I can. And they wanted me to they wanted me to educate my voice, you know? So they would put me to music classes, different music teachers, vocal teachers. And it, all of them were puro mariachi. My dad loved mariachi, and he saw more future in me with mariachi. And so I would study with a lot of old school mariachi uh, teachers. Like, for example, I don't know if you heard Mariachi Vargas. Yeah. The, 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 old, the, the OGs. The OGs. Yeah. So one of the integrantes used to be because he retired. He became a music teacher. And he taught me how to sing. He taught me how to play the guitar. And, yeah, many more uh, music teachers that I've studied. Even opera, bro. Like, in, at my high school years, I, I studied a little bit of opera. So, for you in high school, were you the dude that, hey, Brian sings, make him sing yeah. a song to you? Yeah. So, you would sing song to girls? Hell yeah, bro. Like I, like I said, it was which, which one, music. Was, which, one, which one was the go-to? Which one was the go-to? Uh, what song? Man, it was a lot. I was singing different, different girls, like. Uh, if it was like the a one, different the girl one, in the, the one, same the school, one. I would obviously sing a different song. The one. <laughs> if I sing, if I sing the same song, bro, then you'd be like, "What the fuck? That's my song." Exactly, exactly. So, which 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 one was the one you remember? Like right uh, now, if you remember, if so, you ha- you have a big following. Okay, TikTok, yeah. uh, Instagram. You have you have a, you have a big following. So I'm sure everybody's interested to find out your old school, right? Yeah. So what was that old school song? Old that, school. That, not, not old school song, but that when you were in high school, that it was your go-to that you remember. Get you los ojos, man. I was, I was ashamed. Can we sing it? Can we sing oh, it? yeah. I'll, what I'll is sing. it? What is it? I'll, I'll sing it to you. <laughs> <laughs> look at me. Look at, look at me. My, I, look at hey. Dylan. Look at Dylan. <laughs> <laughs> que chulos ojos, but, bitch. <laughs> it's like. Que chulos ojos. Los que tiene esta linda joven que estoy mirando. And that's the part when everybody fucking screams like, yeah. Woo! <laughs> Miradita, esa que me está matando. Yo la voy a convencer. Y si la convencía, <laughs> uh, But yeah, man, like, music was my go to to kick. Get out of my comfort zone, if that makes sense, you know? Like, that made me who I am today, and it boosted my confidence, and it molded me to the man that I wanted to be, you know? So who, so Brian without singing, what's the difference between Brian that's not singing, between Brian that is singing? He, 
would had a lot of cats, that's for sure. <laughs> like very antisocial motherfucker. Um a lot of cats. Bro, <laughs> that's how they I don't know. <laughs> that's what I always imagine. Like people like are fucking like fucking antisocial. Like, like ten, they have like a shitload of fucking hats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> nah, but you know what? Like all those introverts that are listening in and and it's all the all the people that are not just introverted but shy because Maybe just the potential that they're scared of. No, not only that, they're scared of getting out of the comfort zone because yeah. they're they're afraid to see what's on the other side of the, the yeah, mountain. Like, you, like like, you can really be life for who you exactly. really are. It's because life is all about risk. You know, no, it's not all about risk, but it's all about giving opportunities and giving your all because you never know when that opportunity can change your life. So yeah, you, honestly, like I think those are. That's the thing about here that that we realize and I realized a lot of the time that when you're being confident in your own self, you're going to attract a certain amount of people. Not only that, it, it attracts positive people, like people that you uh, want in life. You know what I mean? Yeah, like that you needed. It, that you that need, you needed in life. Exactly. That you never knew you needed until they came and you exactly. were just like, exactly. damn, fool. Like, I'm not going to lie. I've, I've never been. Oh, shit. We're good. Technical difficulties. Happy dad. Happy dad. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. sorry. It's because I'm not a dad. That's why I'm a dad. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, what was I saying? Uh, like when you when you when you're the best version of yourself, you're gonna attract a certain certain amount of people, like a certain yeah. type of person, right? Yeah. That you never knew you needed, but when they came around, you're just like, damn, bro, like you are that positive, influential. Trust on my me, life. bro. Like, I was I was never like this, man. Like it would po- come a point in time when I was. Didn't know what the fuck I wanted to do in life. And I was surrounded with people that didn't, neither did they. And, and like, it would be a lot, like, a lot of bad negativity or, like, there's always problems. And, like, yeah. honestly, if, whether you like it or not, that, those problems and that vibe, it attracts to you. Like, it, it, it becomes who you are as well. Like, yeah. whatever they're be f- going through, like, that's the same thing that you're going to be dealing with later on in life. And that's yeah. how you're going to react, too. So, like... Man, it's just like just taking a little switch or trying to change your life cycle, surround with people more positive or people yeah. that you think that it suits you best to where you want to be at, you know? Yeah, that I think the the biggest thing is you can't be af- you can't be afraid of being authentically yourself because I know the scary part is losing the people you've been around with or around a, a big part of your life. Yeah. But until you release those type of people, your life starts to change. Exactly. Yeah. And I know the people that I have here today, we've all gone through this recently. And we're still going through it. Like, I think the a big blessing that, that came out of nowhere was, you know, meeting all of you guys. Jonathan from Jonathan was. Shout out to Jonathan. Shout out. Mesa. Shout out fucking, fucking Jonathan you, bro. Mesa, bro. Go, my hermano, bro. Go kiss yeah, your yeah. fucking horse again. <laughs> Man, like going back to saying like like uh, being yourself. Like, there's a, this one phrase that my my uh, music teacher always told me. Her name is Susana Guzman. Wherever you are, I have a little quick shout out. She would always say to me, "Be yourself. Everyone else is taken." So, <laughs> okay, <laughs> not like that. <laughs> you know, like 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 that. It really stuck to me. Like like you know, like trying to be myself. Because not gonna lie, we always try to. Look up to someone like, like you know, example, like for like a celebrity or a singer, someone that we really wish to be or be in the same shoes as them. Do you feel yourself as now we're out in stage like a celebrity? Not at all. I feel like I'm a uh, just, just, uh, just a singer trying to let my voice be heard. You know, like is. Music is in my veins. My grand, my grandpa used to be a musician, and my tios, um, all in that what family did, line. Or like, is your bloodline on like, my mom's side? On my mom's side in ooh, Sinaloa. There it este, is. Well, that's why I have the clarinet. My grandpa used to be in this one band, banda called Los Porteños, and man, they were like the back in the '80s. They used to be the bopping shit, man. Like in Sinaloa, they used to play like cartels, like a uh, famous cartel. Uh, uh, narcos Like for example yeah, yeah, yeah. Rafael Caro Quintero Rafa bought Like a A bus A music bus For them Literally like, They were like Their little sponsors and shit And okay. everywhere they would go Even in prison They would play for him 
So like those were in the eighties. So, yeah. but now like the band that I, I believe that they don't play anymore. They don't exist anymore. So like for you, music, right? So the yeah, as it goes a long way. But long singing, way. I'm the only person that sings. That's the thing. So when you say when you go to do a a, a gig, right? Someone books you for a gig. You show up. What's your mentality when you show up? Honestly, my mentality, man, yeah. is just grateful, man. Praise, no, be blessed to God because obviously I have a, I have a, an, uh, another gig, another opportunity to share, share my voice. But there so has to be a listen. feeling, though. Absolutely. Like uh, besides, besides getting the payment, besides getting. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Like uh, what? Aside on that, but yeah. like uh, my feeling is to grateful. Like I don't know if that's a feeling, but be happy, man. Like as soon as like all the problems, obviously, like every day is uh, not, it's never gonna be fucking. Well, bright clouds in the sky and yeah. the sunshine bright. Like obviously, there's gonna be ups and downs, but whenever I go somewhere, bro, like I change my attitude. Like I don't show what I'm feeling. Actually, yeah. like I, I, I hide my emotions. What I'm feeling right now, because at the end of the day, the people around me, it's not their fault that I'm feeling like this way. Like, and they come to see me and they come to support me, and they don't deserve yeah. me sharing those bad feelings or that nice. little attitude. So like, I always try to keep it professional and maintain that little positive attitude. And, be happy, like flip the switch. That, that that was one thing that I was I was telling. I've been telling people that the last couple of weeks is like, I could be going through whatever I'm going through, but it's not the other person's fault. How like what I'm feeling? So they came or they're talking to me because they think I'm gonna be this. I gotta give them that. Exactly. It's not their fault that this shit went to shit. Yeah, bro. They're coming with the whole another energy, so I gotta match it. Yeah, because. Yeah, because como sea, como sea, that energía that you're transmitting se le pega a la otra persona. Oh, yeah. And you don't want that. At the end yeah, of the so like, so. You, you've been around, I'm, I'm imagining, tremendous amount of people now, right? Yeah, man. You, did, you just went to Guadalajara? Guadalajara, Guadalajara. Yeah, man. I can't sing fool. I'm not gonna do it. I'm not even gonna sing, try. Sing to me, bro. <laughs> sing to my ear, man. I'm, I'll, I'll sing some country fool. Yeah, better lock the door. Better lock them door. Nah, Tennessee whiskey. Tennessee whiskey. Tennessee whiskey, but in English. Hey, you sing in English and I'll sing in Spanish. How about that? I think, I think my phone is connected, so I think we can play it either way. Right now. And then, so stay tuned for this one. Right, um, but like throughout the whole thing, right? Like you're meeting big people. You're meeting normal people. You're meeting. Whatever it is, because as a singer, everybody has an idea like, oh, you're only with the big dogs, people that could afford you. Mm -hmm. But it's like, nah. Like, Bro, like, I treat everybody the same way that I treat as fucking talented people, like, uh, or A, celebrities or whatnot, have you. Because at the end of the day, no somos nadie. You're, we're just normal people trying to make a living and try to say something to the world. And we're just telling our story, you know? What, what's, what's your favorite, favorite song that, like, so when shit gets tough, when things are not going correctly and you're having a moment, because in Ball and Park, shout out Jorge and Adri when they had their little get get together, you were you were talking to us, you were talking to me that you know you you're not always happy. Yeah, man. We, we all go through our demons. We all fight our demons. So is there a song that you go to that when you listen to it, you're just like, all right, cool, bro. Uh, there's this one song that uh, Adrián Chaparro and uh, Regulo Caro sing Ooh. together. It's called La Solución. Ooh. That song, like, uh, literally what... <laughs> <laughs> Damn, behind the scenes. Canicas. So, canica <laughs> hey. Hey, he wanted to play a game. That's what I remember. I know. Hey, make sure did, you hit the other canica. <laughs> <laughs> make sure you, you hit the other canica. Um, hey, make the pozo. Make the pozo. Right over here trying to be serious, <laughs> dog. And you over here doing acting up, bro. <laughs> these, these are like things behind the scenes, guys, that you guys bro, don't we see. Should, we should happens. put a camera right here facing the I know. Too. Fuck. This is a live audience <laughs> that doesn't know how to act. Freaking Dylan. That was funny. Genesis? You're the one holding it, bro. <laughs> he was like this. I know. Hey, don't get nervous, bro. Maybe, get maybe nervous. it was that. I'm over here trying to get him like to cry and shit, and you guys are over here fucking breaking canicas out <laughs> and stuff. Come on, bro. <laughs> what does that song say? 
So right. that's on regular caro Adrian Chaparro. What is this? Say? Este, whatever. It, 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 like uh, throughout my course of my life, like I struggled a lot. I had to do a lot of sacrifices and like yeah, man. There's a lot of downs and ups, but right now we're in an up. But this song, re- I can really relate to it. It's empieza. Siento que he cambiado con el tiempo y a su paso voy creciendo de los golpes aprendiendo y así he de seguir y siento el deseo de estar contento que eso no sea siempre el cuento la sonrisa siempre tengo y así he de seguir y si hay calorcito me ha, me ha no, mi abanico es el frío es canijo, mi acobijo es el chisme me dijo, traigo audífonos, no me complico, si hay conflictos la vida la vivo, ha lo mismo y a quien me ha querido, doy lo mismo, devuelvo el cariño, ya que me hizo algo mal esos mismos, les va a tocar verme mejor. Hey, it's a badass God. song. I can't sing it like them, but my respect is for Adrian Chaparro Regul Cuero, but it's a badass fucking nah, song. Nah, but, but those lyrics, those... It hits, man. It hits. Those, yeah, you know, like, you gotta... At one point, you gotta go away from the beat and just be a lyricist. Exactly. You gotta listen to the words. You gotta listen to what it, what it Not what a lot of people said. do that. They just hear the fucking beat and they just start feeling the vibe. But yeah, like, I'm... I, hopefully I don't get canceled. I'm not a big techno person, house music person. Hey, like, <laughs> como dije, uh, th- this is what I say, bro. Music is like a universal language. Yeah. So, like, there's, pa to, para, pa to gente va a ver. Like, yeah. a lot of people that are going to like certain things that you're not like. At the end of the day, I respect that, you know? You, gotta, you, you know, there, there's going to be lyrics that, like, get to you that when you think about whatever moment you're going through, a happy, sad, tough, you know, glorious moment there's a song that always comes up to you and you're just like hell yeah hey. like even like right now i think like post malone congratulations oh yeah definitely oh, i want to say congratulate damn yeah, low man. key that's that's a gem there's another there's another song too in country uh, it's even though i'm leaving by luke combs <gasps> man Fucking luke combs bro <laughs> Hey, she goes Luke to Combs. country clubs, so we gotta hang I, out with Genesis. I'll, Put me on with the you. boots. I never been in a country club, but hey, yeah, oh, we're ready. Yeah. Hell yeah, we're ready. I already got the sunburn and everything, girl. Him too. You don't wear boots, so we're not talking to you. <laughs> he, nah, <laughs> did, I told some. him. I told what, him hey, with Carlos, Carlos, with Nina Charles. Tell him if I didn't tell you. You're still doing that podcast over there, right? Still? Yeah, well, Lalo. Yeah, yeah shout out Lalo. We're, yeah, we're supposed to go set it up. Get a, but get a pair right there. Fuck. Lalo's in set San Francisco right now. You know, shout out my boy. Oh, the Lalo. Huh. He's traveling the world. He's traveling the world. <laughs> Conquering it everywhere. Conquering everywhere. But, you know, so lyrics are always going to reach whoever and whenever. Yeah. You're always gonna, there's always going to be a moment that you Especially think about it. Especially at your lowest point, man. Honestly. Yeah, low key. Yeah, that's when that's when you like really start thinking start, about lyrics. You really start listening. Yeah, you're <laughs> you like, know what? damn, that really said that. <laughs> really, I just hear the beat. Yeah, oh my god, I was just hearing what well, the beat. To, I was banging my head, but you start listening to whatever lyrics you're listening to, and you're just like, damn, bro. And some of them make you cry, dog. Serio, you know. But like, like I, like I said, when I was like in my darkest point. Music wasn't even helping me neither, bro. Like, so what helped you? Uh, so I think I told you about it. Like in the beginning of my year, bro. Like I, well, way back in my high school years, I, I had this vicio. I would like to smoke pot every day, man. Like, uh, every day, man. Like I would say I would smoke like seven, eight joints a day, bro. Like that's how. But like it wouldn't affect me. Like I'll be like a normal guy doing my reg- my regular schedule, and whatnot, happy. I would do opera. I would do musical theater, bro. And it wouldn't affect me, man. Like, my memory was, you was like, on point. Like that? Yeah, hell yeah. Dead ass. Jesus. I'm writing myself out, but don't get mad. <laughs> Loxa. That was, that was, That's my ba- that right was past there. tense. That was past, past tense. tense. Don't it's worry past. about it. You know what I mean? But, man, I was really dependent on that, and it became my my daily. So, like, every morning I would smoke a joint. I wouldn't eat first. Like, first I would smoke a joint, then eat. But... Later on in life, I started seeing my my schedule, my surroundings, the people that I was surrounded to. I hated it, man. Like I I started 
and even my family, my family was like realizing that shit, and they didn't like it. Yeah, it was affecting them more than it was affecting me. And I started realizing that, and I wanted to make a change of it. So by the start of this year, I decided to just stop smoking weed, stop like completely. Like the good thing about me, like that I really like, is like whenever I say something, I do it. Like I don't, I don't like to break break it's, my word bro, because at it, the end yeah. of the day, because like my yeah. parents. Well, my dad was the one that raised me and raised me to the man that I am. And also my mom, too, you know. But he always told me this. Mijo, en esta vida solo hay dos cosas que vale la pena. In this, in this life, there's only two things that you're worth and you have and you're you're going to take with you until, you until you die. It's your word and your boss. You better not break none of those two. Because the day that you fucking break one of those two is when you're worth shit. You're worth shit. That shit stuck to me, bro. Damn. Since a little kid, man, at the age of 10, he told me that shit. <laughs> I was drinking Capri Sun. All right, Dad. <laughs> okay. All right. I get you. I get you. Make sure you guys are all fucking tuning in. You know, I love you guys because $40,000 a week is unbelievable. And because of you guys, this is dope. And, and it's, it's just the beginning. It's just the beginning. But I always give the thanks and the light and the flowers to our guest. It's not me. I just put things together. It's oh, it's it's the guest that makes makes this go where it goes and where it's at. Because yeah. no, but also the host as well. Because like you're the one that's keeping the conversation flowing. You know Trying. what to say after after to the next. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Because not a lot of people can do that, man. It, it's, you're doing it. Yeah, you're you know it, so, some some tequila shots in, in in effect, but we're working. Hey, sorry, but. Man. The happiest moment that you've had, what, like, in your career? My career? Your, your career. Yeah. What, what was that? What did it feel like? What did it look like? <sighs> okay. Remember, I, to, I, I think I told you that I'm a huge Pedro Infante fan. Correct. So, okay. Si so, no me quieres, mi modo. So, <laughs> there's this one theater here in L.A., downtown L.A. It's called the Million Dollar Theater. Like, there's, like, a street. In Puros Teatros, yeah, old yeah. school theaters. And that theater was the last theater that Pedro Infante performed before his death, after he flied out to, to Mexico. And I got the opportunity to perform in that theater. With uh, It was like a huge festival here in downtown LA that they were doing. And I had the opportunity that they invited me and they hired me to, for, to perform right there with a live mariachi. In front of, uh, venue was like for 4,000 people. And it, like, yeah. it was full. Like it was... It was packed. Dang. So I think that was one of my happiest moments in my career because I got to be backstage. They had like little placas, little pictures of You saw Fante, like the bro. whole thing. I yeah, saw the whole yeah. thing, man. Everything was old school, so they maintained everything so, the same thing. What what's your love though? Is it mariachi or is it banda? What kind of banda? Bro, it's everything, man. I'm I'm I I'm in love with the music, man. It, everything. If, if you ever see Brian at a scenario where there's music, you know he's gonna end up on stage. Yeah. Mm, I'm gonna yeah. I'm gonna pop up the video. Like, I'm gonna pop up the video right here when you he jumped over the fucking barricade just to go dance on top of the <laughs> stage at Vicolandia. Hey, I told you, I told you, you're like, nah, bro, let's do it. You're, hey, I, you're the only one hyping me up. That's the, that's the yeah, cool part. Yeah, hey, I had to. You're like, because he was let's like, do it, bro. Because I was it. like, hey, we're like, what are you trying to do? He's like, oh, well, I'm trying to get up there. I'm like, yo. Let's go. Let's make it happen. Fuck it. So me here in my little vlogging area, and I'm just recording this food, and we end up in, in the side. And he's like, damn, I don't know what to do. Should I jump over? <laughs> Might as well. <laughs> <laughs> After that, he stayed up. I thought he was just going like one song coming back. He didn't come back. I so I had left. Up. I tried the to go show. find Dylan, but I couldn't find Dylan. <laughs> He really oh, did. did. He, he really did. He huh. really did. Oh, for real? Yeah, he really did. Damn. My guy has no shame. He said, you don't have you don't have a VIP band? Okay, don't worry about it. <laughs> Come here. <laughs> Let me tell you something. <laughs> when you left that that theater, what did you tell yourself? What did what is that feeling? Man, like like I was I was I witnessed a piece of history that like you know like I, I was I was a part of something that not a lot of people can be a part of because that theater bro it's closed man like they just keep it as a it's like like a like I would say like a little sanctuary that not a lot of people can open that theater because they're trying to conserve it since it has a lot of history with it a lot of a celebrities at the time like in the 60s 70s that was performed it. there bro that was the shit yeah 
And to having me to be there and having me to be a fan of Pedro Infante, that said a lot to me. And, and I was with the nieta of Pedro Infante right there, too. Her name is Lupita Infante. They were actually close friends. Le mando fuerte saludos. And, yeah, it was it was beautiful, man. I was I was really happy that day. I was really happy. Yeah. Are you happy now? It's definitely. Why are you happy? What's the happiness to you? Uh, happiness, having lots of health, having my family happy, the people that I love happy, makes me happy, you know? So uh, when that, so what does a tough day look like, Brian? So for, in a singer perspective, right? Because I want to say, you tell your story through through music. Yeah. You can relate a lot of things through music. You have the voice, you have the, obviously the platform, but... For you, what when you go through a tough day, what do you do? How do you handle it? Bro, uh, like I said, my lowest point was that this when I started to stop smoking weed uh, at the beginning of the year. Uh, throughout the weeks, weeks went by. I started getting anxiety, bro. Like, like I, I wasn't feeling myself. Everywhere I would go, like in a restaurant or in a, at a family friend's house, um, that same instant, as soon as I arrived, I wanted to leave, you know? Like, yeah. It was like that type of thing that when people would talk to me, I w- wouldn't, I didn't like it. Yeah. Uh, even though I was very social, like I'm very, I'm a friendly guy, you know? Like whenever people come up to me, I don't give a fuck. Like I'll become best friends with you. Like that level of comfort zone, I, like, that's how I am and that's how my parents raised me to be. But, man, like, those were, I believe that as soon as that gave me anxiety, like, I I guess, like, that leaned on to depression because, like, remind you again, like, the people that I was surrounding myself with at the time wasn't really benefiting me at all. All the problems that they were talking about, all the fucking gossip, all the, all the bad shit, a bad energy at the you end were, of the day, you, you, were, know? you were just moving on, bro. Like, that's the thing about, like, for everybody when listening in that's looking for answers, right, and... I feel like when you listen to a podcast, like you're looking for a, a answer or that phrase to get yourself out of whatever the fuck you're going yeah, through. Man. It's like, look, if you know you're not happy and you got to question the friend group that you're in, you got to go. Yeah. Without a doubt. Like, you, whatever, Definitely. if they start talking about you, if they start saying this or that about you, yo, you got to go look out for you because. And not only that, bro, like at the time I was. I was doing good in social media. Like, every post, I would get, like, 300K, 400K, a million. And, like, I was doing fine, bro. Like, I was being good. But what comes with the success, there's always negativity, bad haters and shit. And since I wasn't in in my right state of mind at that time, it affected me a lot, man. Like, like all the negativity, negative Every, comments. Everything that's good doesn't feel as good. Exactly. That's the thing. Yeah, bro. Yeah, and like, you, you can have the most highest dude, fucking accomplishment. When I was in depression, like, having that suicidal thoughts, too, as well, I forgot to mention. Ooh. Um, That's when Travel of Whiskey came out, bro. And I had a million views in less than a month. Dang. To me, if I was, like, right and right in the right state of mind, I would be so fucking happy. I would re- re- why, even cry, but why, bro. But why go through, like, that suicidal stuff? Like, uh, I honestly, that's what, something so that... So that's a, that's a low point. Yeah. So that's a low point, and the the way we started this podcast was mental health. We we make that conversation comfortable. Yeah, man. That I was actually and telling it should be yesterday. something that people should talk more often because a lot of people have been dealing with it, and they don't know how to open themselves up to people and they they feel like they're alone but in reality everybody nah. deals with that yeah. at one point you know it's just we're we're becoming that voice and that voice for those people that don't have it or the confidence yeah to have it because trust me at that time i didn't have i had zero confidence my confidence was at my lowest point yeah i didn't know how to fucking speak bro like people would t- try to talk to me or like i'll receive information from people good news or whatever the fuck yeah i couldn't i didn't know what the fuck to respond or how to react i didn't have no mo- emotion yeah um, but like I said, the negative comments came along with my depression, didn't fucking work with me. <laughs> and yeah. it, like, I would just read the negative comments. I wouldn't fucking pay attention with the positive shit. Dude, you can have a hundred, a th- hundred great comments and then you get that one that you're just Before, like, you know, you're just like, fuck. I would focus on those. I'm you know? just petty right now, bro. Like if I see a negative comment, like I'll go and comment back. Like, damn, bro. Thank you for commenting. But I'm sorry. Like, why'd you feel like that? Yeah. They erase it. Or. Mm-hmm. 
I'm just my opinion. So like, don't get mad. I'm like, I'm not mad, bro. I'm just, I'm really just wondering. Yeah, why. man. Like that that shit affected me. And then, yeah. like I said, uh, so everything was going well with my music career, but I wasn't doing good with my my friends and families. And and uh, what do you think? There's a sacrifice though. What do you mean? To get your music career up, you have to definitely. definitely. There's gonna be sacrifice on this side of the end. Definitely everything, time. Uh, People, friends, and families that you used to hang uh, a lot with yeah. that you don't because music is time consuming, man. Like everything we career do, wise career is time wise, consuming. Career wise, any career is time consuming. Yeah, and if you want to take it to the next level or you want to be somebody, you got to make sacrifices no matter what. What when you think about sacrifices, like when someone comes to ask you, like, "Yo, I want to be a musician." Uh huh. They want to know what the good... How, how to do it. How to it do it. Bro, like I said, like I, I learned how to play guitar with, through YouTube. Obviously, I learned how to play the guitar with another people, like a, a couple coaching, but it wasn't working for me. So I had to learn on my own, man. I had to struggle, but it took me like two years just to actually fucking get one song, bro. <laughs> Serio, neta, neta. It was like the first year was on and off. I would play it, and I hate it because like the metal strings would fuck up my fingers. Yeah. I would just leave it. Like, I would just put it in the corner. I was like that. I'm fucked up, like mad about the guitar. I'll leave it there for a couple of months. A uh, year went by, and I see the fucking d- the guitar all fucking dusty up. Dusty up. So I pick it up again, and I start playing again. And it was a little bit easier than the first time. I was like, what the fuck? Yeah. It didn't feel like, like last time. So then I got the hang of it little by little. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, man, like I said, it takes sacrifices. It, no matter lit- if it's early or late, as long as you're doing it, you're always going to see the results. So so when someone asks, someone's going to come up to you and ask you, what's the best piece of advice you have gotten in your life? What is it? You could only walk on one side of the street, not both. <laughs> so. Who told you that? My... I see him as a father figure. He's his name is Tony Martinez. He also was the the man that raised me to be an actual man too. Like I, I at the time I would work in uh, construction, and I would do tile, demo, uh, roofing, yeah. uh, muebles, arm, uh, furniture, everything, man. Because of that guy, he he was the one that taught me everything, and he was the man that told me that consejo. Because he told me, like, I told him, I want to do construction but because I want to learn and start a business, but I want to do music. Well, mijo, at the end of the day, you can only walk on one side of the street, but not both. Because as soon as you start walking both, you can't focus on one shit. So if you want to do one thing, do one thing at a time, but 100%. Because you ain't going to go nowhere when you're doing both things at one time because then next thing you know, you're not going to do shit. Have you had a conversation with him? Definitely. All the time. Mm-hmm. Like I said, he was like a father figure. Like, whenever I needed help or something that I didn't know what to do. Yeah. Whatever scenario, he was the guy. Because at the time, I would live by myself in Coachella. It was in Coachella that I was staying at for, like, at least a year. And, man, like, he was, like, my father figure. Like, everything that I needed or whenever I needed a ride, because at the time, I didn't have a car. He would pick me up. He would take me places. Uh, take me out. That's fucking dope, man. Yeah, shout bro. out to him, bro. Yeah, bro. Shout out, shout out to those people that... When you know you're not at your best... And, and for a fact, you're going to get mad, but he was actually... Since I've been always dying to get, like, a Raiders jersey. Don't get mad. Calm down. I'm hey. fucking leaving already. Hey, sit down. Sit Dylan, down. pack hey. up, dog. Let's go. Hey. <laughs> my, da- my, my, my dad is actually a cowboy, so, so that's that's a plus. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> <laughs> and so I've been always dying to get a Raiders jersey. And so literally on my first week at work, at, by the end of the week, he literally bought me a jersey. The week this one premieres, I'm buying Brian a cowboy jersey. And if he doesn't wear it, we're not friends no more. <laughs> hey, just to prove it to you that it's just the jersey, man, and, and it's more about the relationship. I'm not buying you sure. nothing, Dylan. I'm, I'm aware, bro. I'm aware. <laughs> nothing for you, Dylan. <laughs> nothing. Get, get him some socks. <laughs> get him some boots. <laughs> no, no, no. Get him some canicas. Wait. Hey, you want some canicas? <laughs> Some Kanika Cowboys. My my guy's a dreamer. I'm gonna always say it. My guy's a dreamer. Oh, I yeah. love that guy. Oh yeah. Hey, dreamer, night dreamer. Hey, right? <laughs> night dream. <laughs> I swear that jersey that he has right now, and right now today, me Dylan, we're matching. We're gonna take a video of this. Um, he was like, "Damn, fool, I've never wear this." And like, fool, you get like you have no. Pot He's, in grateful. Your, He's grateful. He's you grateful. You have no pot in your friend, dog. Like you got to. <laughs> 
big. But he's a bad money, so he's all full. <laughs> You're really? Hey, but, but, Sunburn. Hey, but you, Dylan, <laughs> you're burned. You already burned, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you're <I'm> white. <laughs> <laughs> Dylan, what are you? What are you talking about? You're you're like an overwell done steak, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you're like a leftover tortilla. <laughs> Instead of the it's it turns into a tostada. tostada. <laughs> <laughs> you like that chocolate bro. chip cookie that just ah, got stood there. Uh, <laughs> but Dylan, I love chocolate chip cookies. Hey. Don't worry. I love and hey. I love tostadas. Hey, and I love tostadas. tostadas. Shit, man. I love them. With some camarones on top. Some mariscos. mariscos. He doesn't like mariscos. He, I, he don't like mariscos. Dylan. I don't prefer it. Dylan. Let me find out, for Dylan. Don't do this. Don't do this right now. Watch, watch me take you to Sinaloa. We're bro, gonna to run it. He can't come back. Oh, bro. <laughs> oh, even better. So he can fucking learn how to fucking look at my and then come back. I'll visit you every week. <laughs> <laughs> hey, the keys on the table. The keys on the table. Um, now, nah, but for every for everybody that's like <laughs> listening in right now, and. You have to think about all those people or the few people that really helped you get through whatever moment you were going through. Yo, reach out to them right now and give them thanks because I can tell you exactly who helped me when I was going through my stuff, when I still go through my stuff, that if it wasn't for them, I wouldn't be who I am and where I'm at. I, I don't know how that dark cloud would have been in my life if I would have stood there. Like, we all go through our dark... For me, bro, I wouldn't be here, man. We all go through our dark clouds, bro. It's just, when we get through them, we're just like, damn, hell yeah. But I got to give thanks to certain people. Definitely. But without them, I'm like... And I say it, not proudly, but I say it like, yo, like, I would not be here, bro. Me neither, man. You know, like, that's the thing. Like, the clouds are always going to, like, more than often are going to come over our heads. The thing is, like, you you got to keep walking because the sunlight is at the end of that tunnel, at the end of that road that you're going through. It's right there. The problem is no one wants to walk. Like, I'm going to sit yeah, down Everybody right wants and, to run, bro. Or everybody just want to fucking climb that fucking fence when, we, when you don't fucking know what's on the other side. You feel me? Yeah. Like, you could go around it and then see everything was going on. And you'd be like, oh, shit, I could have, if I could have jumped over there, I wouldn't land on that fucking spikes or whatever the fuck. Facts. So like, like, you just gotta keep. You, you gotta go through those thorns to know what walking on on the sand feels like. Exactly. You know what I mean? Like, you gotta go through that rough patch of dry grass. Definitely, man. And, and, and <laughs> to know what that green it's, grass it's all, feels like. It's all about like. the experience, man. And, and uh, como yo siempre dice, even with my d depression and all that fucking shit that I was going through, it had to happen to me right now, so it doesn't happen to me in the future. Or if it does happen, I know how to control it. You know what I mean? So that is factual facts, bro. Like, uh, like I said, like I was in a point in time that I I was cutting myself, I was overdosing, uh, or over, overdosing with pills and shit, trying to see if it works for me to just not be here. Yeah. And it also came to a moment that I was literally I filled my 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 tub, my house. I was living with my, with my parents at the time. I filled it up with water, and I had the air conditioner on my right hand. Bro, I was ready to. I had it on already. I was just, I was just ready to drop it. And I remember that my dad arrived from work, and he knew what, what was happening to me. He was, he couldn't sleep. Like those couple of weeks, I put my parents through the worst, man. Yeah. And like till now, like I started reflecting, it and shit makes me feel fucked up. But at the end of the day, like they care about me. And I remember that I had the tub full with water and had the air conditioner literally yeah. on, literally about to let it go. I just hear my dad's voice. Mijo, don't do it. Yeah. I want you to still be with me. There's a lot of things I want to do with you. And, like, since I told you, like, I couldn't react to certain things, or I didn't have emotion to it, I don't know what the fuck I was doing. So I was still dropping it. I, I didn't fucking listen to him. Even though he was telling me, Mijo, I need you here. I don't want you to leave. 
And all of a sudden, I just hear the fucking break, the fucking door fucking break. He was kicking it, trying to open it. So I locked myself in. I was like, Dad, no te esfuerces. I don't deserve parents like you. Like, I, I don't deserve none of this. You deserve better. And he fucking kicks the door. Fuck, like four times. Fucking knocks the door over. He grabs the fucking air conditioner, starts throwing it in the fucking floor. He looks at me. I was with my clothes on, all wet in the fucking tub. His eyes were fucking bawling, bro. And never in my life I've seen my dad cry. Uh, the only time that I seen him cry was when my grandma passed away. His, her mom, his mom. But that was like, I was five, seven years old. But that was like the first time that I seen him cry for something else. And he was like, mijo, por favor, no me hagas esto. Te lo suplico, yo no quiero que te vayas. Piensa en nosotros, por lo menos. As soon as he was telling me that, bro, I, I couldn't react to what he was saying. I was just with a straight face all the time. I wasn't even looking at him, bro. I was looking away from him, from the shame that I was doing. And, man, I, did, I didn't, I was lost, man. I, I, my mom was there, too. She wasn't crying, but she was the strongest one in the group. But she, she tried everything, man. She took me to therapy. She took me, like, four different therapists, and none of them worked for me. They didn't know what the fuck was going on with me. Also, like, they didn't, they told me, like, like oh, well, the initiative was because you left, you stopped smoking weed. So, like, okay, but what was the reason why you, you started feeling this way? And I was like, I don't know. I don't know. So, it didn't work for me. Then they tried taking me to brujeria with, like. Genius, so <laughs> it came to that point, man. Like, my mom was desperate, man. Like, yeah. she, mi madrecita chula. She took me to every fucking brujeria guy in every fucking corner, man. Yeah. Even from friends that they recommended, man. I don't know what the fuck they were doing to me. Like, yeah. smoke was coming everywhere, werewolves, chicken legs, <laughs> you name it, man. And none of that worked, man. It was still the same shit. At the time, I was waiting. I waited like 180. I lost 40 pounds, bro, during depression. Like, I would lock myself for weeks in my room. Yeah. Didn't eat. I would only drink water. And, but I would sleep every fucking day, bro. I didn't want to fucking go out. I didn't want to fucking know about music. Even though like I was getting a million views in fucking t in, in in YouTube on Tennessee whiskey, it wasn't making me happy. Like I wasn't myself. My emotions were off. My point of life was gone. Like I didn't have no fucking point here. Like I I lost my 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 reason to be here. So late at night, I couldn't sleep. My parents were still awake, but they're. They're like they like throughout those whole fucking period of time, months and of depression. Depression. They were always like awake. They were just worried that I would do something stupid. And late at night, I I got up. I got out of the house. And I took a stroll, bro. I well, it was like three, four in the morning. Yeah. I was walking, and, and there's like there's this, this street. Was close by to where where I live. It's called La Pacific, in Huntington Park. It's super famous. Like it's like they have like little local stores around. Yes, sir, you already know the Pacific. And I would walk right there, bro. Like I walked the whole fucking block. All the stores, they're all closed. But I was just thinking, thinking. I was like, why the fuck am I feeling like this? Why? It's weird. Huh? Why right now? Like as soon as everything is going good, why am I feeling like this? Like I, I didn't ask for this. I didn't want it to feel like this. Like. Like every during that period of time, it even affected my relationship. I was with someone at the time, and she was also a public figure, and it affected me and affected my way of thinking as well. Like in the relationship, I became toxic. I wasn't like everything I would think about. Like when I was with her, I would always think about, oh, what if she's doing this? Or she, well, I would see a guy talking to her. I'm never like that, bro. Never in my life I've been like that. Yeah, I was very insecure, yeah. man. And it caused Hell me yeah. problems and caused dilemmas. With, and she knew that I was going with that. And she tried the best to handle it and try to help me out. And shout out to her. But it didn't work out. She couldn't handle the, 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 what I was going through. She told me these words. She told me, Brian, in order to love someone, you got to learn how to love yourself. And I was like, 
But babe, I, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not myself. Like yeah. I, I don't feel myself. I've never been like this. I don't this. know how to love myself. I don't know how to love myself. I've always loved myself, but right now I just don't know how to fucking turn off the switch. And she's like, "Well, that's something that you gotta hang with yourself." Because la verdad, yo no estoy para ser de. ¿Cómo dijo? At, at at that point, she told me that she didn't want me. She didn't want to be the help for nobody. Bro, like she, and, and and this and is. And from there, like I started realizing, I was like, "Shit, this girl ain't for me." You know that at the end of the day, the way I see it is like, if you truly love someone, you truly care about someone, you're gonna be there no matter what, no matter what they're struggling, yeah. no matter the ups and downs, whatever the fuck they've been dealing with. Knowing that she knew since the start of my depression what I was going through. Nah, you know, the first time like I went through it, and it's not to bring this whole mood down, but it was the same thing. I didn't know what the fuck was wrong with me. I didn't know what to call it. Like, I started crying when some, my grandma or my mom said, okay, are you okay? I'm like, fuck, dog, I'm not good. But my thing, like, I would get locked in a room, and at that time, I had my 392 charger, which I'm glad I didn't have it anymore. Because to me, it was like, yo, I can run this shit wherever. And Bro, I was thinking about that all the fucking time, too, yeah, man. That, like, was a, that was another alternative that I was trying to do, when bro. It, it was one of those things where I ran that shit. I redlined it. But it luckily, like my, par- my parents took all my keys away. Like It was everything. like a... Bro, I ran that shit to like 160. 160? Fuck. I was running it, and I said, all right, I'm going to get off on this exit. It's a turn. I'm not going to press a brake. Those cars don't have no sense of fucking safety. Bro. Fuck those cars. <laughs> they those got cars, no sense man, of safety. A real motherfucker knows how to... if. They, have have to fucking know how to drive that shit because if you bro, fucking, that, that, a lot of people die, bro. Like yeah. even when they don't want to, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, so those are beasts. Some, something, something just happened. I said, press the brake. Went and then the person I had at that time, we had just recently, like probably a week, week or two, just like split it. And I was like, yo, like. No one else is going to understand me. Like, I need you. Like, I don't know what's going on. I just need somebody because I'm crying every day. Every day of my life right now, I'm crying. Like, probably a, most part of the day. And the words that I heard was, I can't help you. Go talk to your mom and, and sister. I said, hmm. Die. Say less. Same thing, man. Like, I, I was s- sent text to her. We're not, like, saying, hey, what are you doing? Even though I know that I fucked up. Like, I, I yeah. got jealous and I made scenes and whatnot, have you? But at the end of the day, yeah. I wasn't myself, you know? My, but, and, and my thing was, you just told me that. So, I went through my shit. I still a couple months, right? I'm not going to put, like, oh, in a week after, I fucking got good. No, no, no. It took a couple weeks. I took a month. More than a month. Two or three months. Seen her eight months later. I'm already with, with somebody else because I, I told her, I was like, hey, you're going to get with me? Like, this is what I'm going through. I don't know how to explain this. I don't know what I'm doing. Like, she said, I got you. I said, okay, thank you. I for The first night we were together, I was crying with her, dog. Like, literally. Like, how you gonna, like to me, it's like, how are you going to take someone serious as a guy and I'm crying to you? And the first night we are together. And she's like, great. And, and I love her to death. And the other girl, we seen each other. She's like, I don't know how, you, I don't know how you're doing it. And I'm like, you see what you're going through right now. I went through it months ago. I just didn't neglect it. I went through it. Now I am who I am. Now you don't like me because of who I am now. So if you thought you didn't like the person that didn't care back then, now the person that I am now, definitely not gonna care about someone that doesn't love me back. Definitely. I'm only gonna show love to the people that love me back when I got nothing. So when, you, like, when you don't have the fame, when you don't have the numbers, when you don't have. The publicity, how many people are still going to stick around here? Only the real ones. That's how Only I can the say. real ones. Uh, where and, we at? And I, and I actually want that to happen at one point because then you start seeing who's real and who's fake, you know? Because it's all about the real ones and the people that cared about you since on your lowest point. My dad always tell me this too, like, mijo, you're never going to know who's your real friend until something bad happens to you. Yeah. Or you're at the hospital. Who's going to be there right there visiting you? Shout out to Dylan, because Dylan is the one that told me. And Dylan is the one that, if anybody knows, is the one that keeps me down. He's just like, he's like, yo, big guy, don't worry about it. He's like, the people that are not meant for us gonna, are going to leave on their yeah. own. You don't even got to make a move. Yeah, exactly. I'm like, oh, you said what? Oh. I love you, bitch. That's the thing you said throughout <laughs> the whole fucking day, man. I know, not the other things. <laughs> Mr. Dylan out here in the hard seat, so he just wanted to start the podcast once again. Mm. But, I mean, my guy Brian, 
doing it. Fast forward, bro. You're trending. What? Man, What's man. your following on TikTok? Uh, Four hundred and four thousand followers right now. Unos pocos, aunque sea. Te los presto, güey, si quieres. The following that you have, what has it brought to your life? A lot of opportunities. Uh, I would be, I'm happy to say that I'm helping out my family, helping them, helping them pay the bills, doing like little house chores left and right, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but yeah, man, like it, it brought me a lot of opportunities. Thing, people that I've met through social media that I've never thought that I would meet. Your confidence ran out through the roof. Yeah. If there's a stage and someone's singing, you're not Before scared of that. But like like I said, bro, when I was like at my lowest point, man, it wasn't it wasn't the same. Like all of this all of this at the time I had three hundred thousand. And I wasn't feeling myself. I was I was not happy because yeah. of that. But going back to when I was walking by myself in La Pacific, bro, I stumbled upon a church, bro. Like I was I was not looking where I was going. I was just walking around, walking around, walking around until yeah. I just see a fucking church right next to me, man. And in that church, there's like a little patio patio outside. Where there's like a little capilla of the Virgin Mary. So I walked in front of her. I, I, like I was standing in front of her. Got on my knees. I was Virgencita. I lost my way. I don't know what the fuck I'm doing right now. Please, if you really there, if you really exist, if you really exist, please help me out. And I promise you I'll do right from, from here on out. So I go back, like I was praying, and I start crying by myself. It was like, keep in mind, it was like 3, 4 in the morning. I go back to the house, and next morning, man, I was like a new motherfucker, man. Like I was, I felt like energetic. I felt like I wanted to go out. I felt like I wanted to wake up, get out of bed, make some breakfast, and, and go to the gym. When you wake up with confidence from the get go, from the get go, bro, bro like you, you know may, that's gonna be a you good may day. not wake up fucking motivated, but you, you wake up purposeful. You're like, shit, I got this, bro. I was told I was a different, I was a different, Brian. You know, at the, uh, when that shit happened, literally, it was the next day, man. You know it. You know it's different when someone else tells you, "Yo, your energy that you bring into the room is needed." Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Like exactly. that is like. Yep. It makes you think about Dude, it. Dude, like, it came to a point that uh, when I was, like, being so different with the different energy, my mom started crying because, like, this is the Brian that I missed. Like, like it was Ooh. very emotional, bro. Damn. And that that's when I, I realized, I was like, fuck, ma, perdóname que hice tantas pendejadas. Things that I didn't fucking recognize that I was fucking up. And... Dude, like every day until this day, bro, I would go straight to church, start to just be grateful for what the day has to offer and yeah. and just hope for the best. Like and Damn. since then. Why is it our moms that make us fucking cry, dog? Dude. You know, and like Ma Madre solo hay una carnal. And, and yeah. those are the only loyal friends that you got, you know? There was a we just had a conversation a couple of weeks like now nah, this this week, last week, I was like, Look, I know you want the best, but you gotta trust me. Trust me that I know what I'm doing, and trust me, trust me enough to remember that what you taught me, I remember. I'm gonna make it home, whatever the case is. I'm. I know the choices I make. That's exactly what I said. Yeah, I was mom. like, I know the choices I make, and the one thing is like, when you make an action, you know the consequences. Yeah, exactly. bad or good, you know it before you make it, and if you make it, you you're good with whatever is coming right after. I was like, look, I love you, and I trust you. But I need you to trust me for the first time in your life that I got this. But it's moms. Moms yeah, are never gonna. Everything. Moms are never gonna trust you enough to be nah, like. They got that. Yeah, Miko, you got no, this. Not only that, they have that little sexual sentido. Like whenever they feel something's wrong, bro. Yeah. It, yeah, it ain't lying, lying bro. That, Serio, dude. That it's, that it's that, like that week. That, it's like a little superpower that they have. Yeah, you know? dude. That that weekend. That we went to Dodger game, Dylan. Shout out Dylan, that Dodger game. Shout out, check out the vlog, it's out there. Um <laughs> besides it, besides that fact, Dylan, besides that. Um, I got home, bro, and I didn't tell no one I was home. And no, actually it was even, it was Saturday. Saturday when I talked to to Ashley. Shout out Ashley, you made it in. Um and the Dylan, they both knew what was going on, and I got home that day. We got home early. Early for us, right, Dylan? Early for us. <laughs> it, was like, it was like two. It was like, it was like still daylight. It was still, <laughs> the sun was still up, so we were good. And I get a message, and I just my mom was like, 
hey, hope you're okay. Just want to make sure you're home and you're good. And like, I'm home. Maybe not good, but I'll get there. But it, when you're not good, and for everybody listening, when you're not good, you got to cry, you got to you gotta frown, you got to scream, you got to do whatever. It's your body releasing all Bro, those emotions exactly. to just reset so you can go at 100 miles you're an cleansing. hour once again. You're cleansing, man. Because, like, if you keep it all inside, man, it just fucks you up. Bro. Not good. Not good. Nah, and hell you, no. You release that fucking energy to people that you really don't want them to experience with or you don't want them to. Yeah. The people that love you, when you shit. release that type of energy, they're going to be like, yo, all right, how can we help? Yeah. What can we do? Not a, uh, well, what the fuck? We don't want to invite you no more. Mm -hmm. We don't want you around. Yeah. It's like, no, 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 Hold on. Then it's different. Because me and you, we're cool. And you're going to go through a, through a moment. Bro, you don't, you, we don't got to go to a privada. We don't got to go to a concert. We don't got to go. No, we can go eat or we can go just chill. Tell me what you're going on, bro. Let's read a this. book. <laughs> Let's re I won't read a book with you, big guy. I'm going to read that shit upside down. <laughs> what was that green book? The Giving Tree or some shit? What's, what's that green book? I'll read Dr. Apple? Seuss. I'm, that's, I'm, that is Dr. Seuss. Oh. Is it? Is it? Or is it? It's kind of like the, the Green Eggs Tree. Green Eggs and Ham. That one, that one. Green Eggs and Ham. It was motivated by Dr. Seuss. I got the it was green, inspired. Green, green Eggs and Ham? No? Yeah, Green Eggs and Ham, yeah. Ah, yeah. good, good, good. Yeah, we yeah, can yeah, read yeah. it. Nah, but, but. I do not like it, Sam I am. Yeah. <laughs> I do not like Green Eggs and Ham. Sam I am. Sam I am. <laughs> You talk, hey, you're talking fucking Dr. Seuss, bro. Hey, I'm a lyricist. Exactly. She knows what's up. I'm a you want to switch out, Genesis? You want to switch out? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. All right, so what's your message to the world? Don't give up. If you have something to you stand for and you believe in, Represent it. Don't fucking fake it out or don't fucking pretend to be something that you're not just because of the people you're surrounded with or try to impress people that you don't fucking like at the end of the day. You know what I mean? Facts. So just be the best version you could ever be because at the end of the day, you're all you got. You you just don't don't how do I say this? Like don't be in competition with someone else. Be in competition with yourself. Look at yourself in the mirror all the time. Say to yourself, how can I be better than where I am right now? And I guess that's how you could you could get wherever you want in life. You could you could become whatever you want in your life. It just depends how much guts and how much willing power you want to do. So facts. You you want to be the best fucking chef in McDonald's? Go ahead. Go and do for it. it. You wanna handle be, that shit. You want to be the best singer? Go ahead and do and it. And know what the fuck you're doing because the motherfuckers that judge just trying like trying out different things, not knowing what the fuck they're doing, and then they say, "Oh my god, I tried it." But do you know what you're getting into? When you're passionate about something, you know whatever the exactly. fuck comes your way, exactly, you're not giving up. Bro. You're because not going to give up. Because there's people that don't, they hate their job. And then I tell them, why the fuck you, why don't you leave? Like, do something else. What do you like? Like, Yeah, but I, I've been there for they, four years. They hit you with a, uh, but, I'm like, but what? But what? What's, what's the, stopping you? What's the difference? The what? only person that can stop you is yourself. There's no fucking excuse at the end of the day, you know what I mean? Oh. What? We're throwing gems. We hey. gotta throw gems. It's, it's facts. Go. If like, you hate people your... blame other people. Oh, it's because of this. It's because of my son. It's because of this. Nah, motherfucker, it's you. Because of my parents. Because, because of my girlfriend or boyfriend. Pa toda hay solución menos la muerte, carnal. That's how I see it. Facts. So. Hey, you can keep complaining, but you're wasting time. And it's time. You see that? You hear exactly. that? It's time. <laughs> Damn. Hey. Hey. Quote that. that. Quote that. <laughs> and in time. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Dylan, Dilemita. go home. <laughs> yeah, bro. Play canicas. <laughs> Play canicas, Dylan. Play canicas. Nah, but if, if you're listening to this and everything you got out of this podcast today with my with my guy Brian is there's upsides and downsides, but you got to look through the downsides, through the dark clouds, because there is light at the end of the tunnel. You just got to find what is going to save you, and you got to surround what, yourself with those type of Whatever rap. you believe in. I'm not trying to put religion because at the end of the day, I believe that everybody can believe whatever they want to be. Yes, sir. Because at the end of the day, if you believe in something or you believe a higher power, go for it. Because as soon as you stop believing, that's when you lose purpose at the end of the day. Be confident in what you're doing and in yourself. And don't let nobody take you down from that high cloud that you're in. As much as people think it's arrogant and it's too much, yo, they're just not in that cloud. And it's cool. They're not always going to be there. They're not, they're not going to be around. 
People Definitely. have a time limit. People have a, a time stamp. And the real ones will stick around through everything you're doing in life. God put, takes those people away from you for a reason at the end. You know what I mean? Like, he puts you, the people, like, when you least expect it, too. When you met this guy, how, how you met him, Fucking for example. Good. When I least expected it. Exactly. <laughs> this when motherfucker pops out. Now, you know what, Pow. like, the, the, the turnaround moment, not turnaround, because I already knew it, but... I mean, Ashley was a witness to this, that when I was going through my tough times, and shout out my guy Dylan, um, when I was going through my tough time, literally, I mean, we're talking about two weeks ago, two weeks ago, like, we hey. like there, we finish a podcast, I'm telling both of them what I'm going through, how I feel, and without even questioning, Dylan just comes up to me and hugs me. That's right. And it's the hug, bro. Hey. The fucking people, hug. People might not think that a hug is not enough, but trust me, it says nah, a lot. You're, it yeah. means. <laughs> 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 Did it couldn't hey, reach me no more. You carried him up. Like this. <laughs> not like. <laughs> <laughs> he is a stool. Like, you have a fucking stool. Now nah, the good thing I was sitting down, so he had to reach down. Uh, but he, <laughs> but it, but his hand, his wait, his wait, hands wait, didn't wait, didn't lock he in. He went like this. <laughs> He just sat on my lap in the front. I just hugged him. <laughs> Didn't it come show how you did it. <laughs> but nah, for real, when you hug somebody, you know the energy and the intention. Bro, you feel the energy. You feel it. Like if you just give someone a handshake, cool. Like you're just cordial. Yeah. But when you hug somebody, you get that energy and you know it. So if you side hug somebody, you know you don't fuck with them. You Dude, know you, not, not you, know you don't fuck with them. You not know that's not that. the energy. Not only that, bro, like... Uh, I was like, and even like when people just like receive you with bad energy or try to talk shit like in, in the beginning, honestly, the way I see it, like, I don't know, nunca lo tomo a pecho or all the negative comments in social media till now. Like, the way I see it now is like it's literally how they reflect on themselves, what they think about themselves. They're missing something. They're missing something. Yeah. Exactly. The, the good thing is, again, I'm going to give a shout out to them today because that's the balance that I have because I'm super petty. Damn. So really? I'm ready to throw shots. I'm like, hey, if I'm going to throw it, nah, nah, fool, don't do that. Like, it's cool. Don't worry about it. I'm like, ah, I feel like I need to. And I just take a step back. Yeah. But at the same time, it's like, yo, it's people are going to. Sometimes you got to step back to see the bigger picture, too. People are going to throw yeah. some shots because they don't know who the person is. Oh, huh, mm. Ashley. Facts. <laughs> sorry, Ashley. I got to, you know how I am. I'm sorry. I'm super petty. <laughs> I'm so we're ready. We cool now. Bro, cool. You guys are cool. Nah, we're not cool. Oh, not cool. No, me and Ashley were cool. Ouch. There's other people that were not cool. Oh, 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 oh. but I, I, I just throw really shot. I throw shots because at hey, one point they're gonna listen to. No, at, at the end of the day, as long as they they're the one fucking talking <laughs> shit, you're not. You're doing your thing. That's how it counts. You just, can't judge somebody by what you think who they are. You gotta know who they. You gotta talk to, to them and gotta get a get conversation. Even if you knew them ten years ago, you gotta have a conversation with them now. Facts. Because who they are now is not who they were. 10 years exactly. ago. Exactly. Yep. They, they may be on a different people path. people always bring up about the past. Like, there's a reason why the the past is called the past. Like, it's gone. Like, it, it made you and it, and you are who you are. And you don't be ashamed it. of your past. I mean, obviously, there's obviously there's going to be people that are not going to learn from the past. They're going to remain the same. But people there's a lot hold, of people that people do People hold change. on to it. Trust me. So, the so what, are we waiting, what are we waiting on, Brian? What's what's coming up? What's coming up on... Uh, well, I got the music video already out and all the platforms, Spotify, Apple Music, Ando La Movida. You guys can check it out. It's good production. I, I brought out a homie from Guadalajara. You fuck, brought the whole team fuck, out. Fuck, I couldn't make it fuck, out. I'm sorry, ass, Brian. I'm sorry. No, but we're actually planning to do another <laughs> corrido, another music video. It's called Los Consejos. De hecho, I'll be everything, there. Everything what I say about this song, bro, like, it, I connect with it and it has more meaning to it. It's like not like uh, just a regular corrido talking about cars, women, drugs, and all that shit. It just literally talks about life. Like, for example, I'm going to sing a little part. Not just, like, speak it out. I'm not going to sing it yet. I'm not oh, trying to expose it. I'm not trying to expose it yet. Not even a little bit. Nah, okay, you're good, you're good. On, off the all right, all right. So, los amigos no te entienden. Se burlan si no te metes. Son consejos que los llevas en la mente. Son consejos que te llevas. Mejor salte de esa pena. Porque el odio te hace perder buena gente. No te creas como Dios, somos mortales tú y yo, porque al subir siempre se baja, recuerda quien te ayudó. Con el dinero que te dan, no hay que pensar siempre en el pan, pero de metas, estrategias, del bote te sacará. Son experiencias de mi vida, las lecciones de este día, es ser mejor que como fuiste el día anterior, se los pido por favor. Oh, shit. 
el día anterior para toda la primera vez. God damn, when is that coming out? Uh, by like mid November, I guess. You know, I, I want I want to shout out all the plebada that our mutual friends that we have in common. Oh yeah, because all those all those guys, Jorge, you know, they're vibe. They're vibe. Raúl, Lalo, um, Jonathan, you like we all got together and the numbers never mattered. The platforms never mattered. Even though there's a lot of people that do that shit, man. Yeah, that day, the first day we ever met, it was wild. It was wild. And we we say we talk about with uh with with Jonathan, and we said it with with um with everybody. Is like, yo, like that day just never mattered. Like, it didn't matter what we had to offer. It's just the conversation that we had is what brought us together. Definitely. And. That's why we're um, we're sitting here for a reason, bro. Yeah, I mean, and I'm blessed, and I'm appreciate you for for taking consideration to invite me, man. And yeah, man, like nah, I, like I said, compa Carlos, Lalo, uh, Jorge, the Pero Noche, Adriana, su esposa, este, everybody, man. Raúl, uh, shout out, Honker, Raul, Honker hats, Honker hats. Go get look, your look, shit look, right look, now. Look, 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 look at look. that. Look at me, shit. I ain't getting paid, but I don't give a fuck. <laughs> You're my homie, though. We get paid Much in love. a different aspect. We get paid in friendship, man. Like, yes, I, I, like I told him, like I told him, man. As long as we have a healthy relationship, friendship, bro, that's all that matters. I don't care about the money because he, he tried to do something for me. But at the end of the day, lo que importa es la amistad, cara. Oh, yeah, I told, him, I told him the same I shit. I was, he was like, oh, I was like, look, bro. I love you, dog. Yeah, bro. I got you. What I want you to succeed as much as I want to succeed. So exactly. and we can all come el, up el together. Chiste, el chiste es crecer, bro. If we can all grow together, why not, man? Like, you know? Don't why be, not? No seas envidioso, güey. No. El sol sale para todos. El sol sale para todos. Si eres envidioso, vete a la... Vete a la... Dylan, Dylan, you can't come through the middle, my guy. I want to come out of the camera. Oh! Oh, shit. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Ya no le den. No le den. Dylan, quarter of the day. Hurry up, hurry up. It's Sandy. Quarter of the day, Dylan. It's, nah, I only got. No, hold on a second. Si no sabes qué hacer, juega canicas. Hold up, I'm trying to come up with a quote porque ya se me olvidó. Espérame, espérame, hold up. Hey, go, go, bro. It's about to die. I'm about to fucking die. Um. <laughs> All right, let's see. Quarter hey, of the fucking day. Hey, drink it for me, bro. Drink it for me. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna need a chase. Right hold on, hold on. I'll give I you the quarter of the day after I drink this. Quarter of the day, hurry. Before. Before. Quarter, quarter of the day, day because we're ending this right now. Yeah. All right, quarter of the day. Fuck. Do, 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 this one, I, I made it up, but I hope you guys like it. <laughs> la vida es para disfrutarla, y hay que disfrutarla cantando. Tennessee whiskey. There we go. Do you want to hear it real quick? en el bar, pasaba mis noches, solo conocía el amor de licor. Porque me enamoro, Pero de tocar fondo... Me rescataste y me alcanzaste antes de estar peor. Eres tan suave como un Tennessee whiskey. Where's the Tennessee whiskey at? <laughs> Eres tan dulce como un vino de fresa. Tan calida como una copa de brandy. And happy dad. <laughs> Con cariño <laughs> y amor. Siempre <laughs> te amaré. There it is. That's the podcast, motherfucker. Subscribe. <laughs> <laughs>